Good morning, friends. How are you? So today's Wednesday, which means late start for my son. So I am in the car for just a few minutes before I head into CrossFit. And I thought I would hop on here and chat about day three with you for just a few minutes. So day three, um, I will put up the, um, the affirmation after I'm done with this video, but day three's affirmation says, I choose to see the blessings that surround me. I choose to see the blessings that surround me. So let's break that down a little bit. What are you choosing to see? So all of us have problems. We all have things that are upsetting, that are hard, that aren't perfect, that we wish were different. But we also all have a lot of blessings. So in day three, he talks about, he uses the example of marriage. <clears throat> and he says, what really matters is what we choose to focus on as individuals within our marriage. If my wife chooses to focus, this is the author, um, I'm reading from day three. If my wife, Kristen, chooses to focus on what's lacking in me, she's going to experience a deficient husband. If I choose to focus on what is missing in Kristen, I'm going to experience an incomplete wife. The quality of our relationship will depend on whether we are mature enough and faithful enough to focus on what is beautiful, excellent, and worthy of praise in the other person. So, and this doesn't just apply to marriage, but I thought marriage was a great example because it's so um, true for most of us. Um, you know, I can focus on what my husband's not doing, how I wish he would do this, and gosh, if he would just do this, and it really it makes me mad when he does this. I can spend all day long finding things about the other people in my relationships, in my marriage, in my family, my friends, my people at church, people at work, whoever you're in contact with, I can spend entire days focusing on what they're not doing right or how they're doing this wrong or how I wish they would be doing that. But what happens when I spend my days focusing on that? Well, then I end up with not great relationships, right? And these thoughts, I will then think, Oh, I have a terrible marriage and oh, my husband, this, that, or the other. And that leads to, does that lead to joy? No. Now, quick little disclaimer. I'm not talking about like abusive situations. Okay. Let's just rule that out. I'm just talking about a regular, ordinary, normal marriage where we're both human and we both do things that are annoying and we both can be hard to love. But when I choose to focus on those things, it just takes me on a downward spiral, right? So what if instead I said to myself and I started naming things that I was grateful for about my husband? What if I started naming the good qualities about my friend? What if I started praying for God to bless my pastor, my church, my coworkers, the people that you know, maybe I disagree with them. Maybe they've done something to hurt me. Maybe we got into an argument. Maybe they really are, you know, they really do have issues. We've all got issues. But what if I choose to focus on all their good qualities? What if I choose to see in my husband the man that God made and the qualities that he has that I love about him? What if I choose to pray for God to bless that person that hurt me because they have good qualities too. So I love this um, and it and applies to everything. Maybe your job, maybe you're totally focused on your job or your business or what you do for work and how it's just not what you wanted it to be. You're not earning enough money. Your coworkers are getting on your nerves. You're not having success. All you see is failure. Well, that's going to lead to more failure because it's going to stunt you, right? Are you going to go out and do your best if you're constantly thinking, oh my gosh, I'm terrible at this. You see what I'm saying? So um, every part of our lives has a mixture of good and bad. Um, you know, where we live, our home, 
our church family, our workplace, our marriage, our parenting, our friendships are all a mixture of good and bad. It's what we decide to put our focus on. So he mentions Philippians 4, 8, which is kind of the basis for this entire book, which says to think on whatever is true, noble, lovely, right, pure, admirable. Um, so here is this passage from the message. Summing it all up, friends, I would say you'll do best by filling your minds and meditating on things that are true, noble, reputable, authentic, compelling, gracious, the best, not the worst, the beautiful, not the ugly, things to praise, not things to curse. Consider this verse for a moment. The very fact that Paul is telling us what we should focus on reveals a critical point. We have a choice. We have a choice. We can think about whatever is true or we can think about whatever is false. We can think about the best in someone or we can think about the worst in someone. If we didn't have a choice, this verse wouldn't be necessary, right? If we were naturally positive all the time, Paul wouldn't emphasize this point so dramatically. If we could not control our neg negativity, this teaching would be in vain, unrealistic, and beyond our capability. But Paul is reminding us by giving us this passage in Philippians that we have a choice. With God's help, we can control and change our thoughts. Further, his words teach us that the choice is between good and bad, between excellence and mediocrity. Life is never completely good or completely bad. Are you that kind of person, like an all or nothing? Like, oh my gosh, this is terrible. And you're, you're forgetting all the good things, right? Well, what if we make that choice moment by moment to see the good, see the best in someone and not focus on the worst? I have just as many worst qualities that people could focus on too. I hope that that you will choose to see the best in me and I'm going to try really hard to see the best in you. There will always be junk and there will always be greatness. What are you going to choose? All right guys, I hope you have a great day. See you later.